Hi, I'm Peggy Farron. Welcome to the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Today we are going to talk about designing photo books. So Heather Musingo, who works here, she's our producer of the Understand Photography Show, she and I are going to talk about designing books, photo books. But first, of course, I have my little commercial I always have to say. Um, the new year is coming up quickly. It's time to really learn photography. So we have lots of options at Understand Photography, but the, you know, the way we like to start people is with the four weeks to proficiency in photography. We offer that as a hands-on class here in Naples, Florida. You can take private lessons here in Naples, Florida or Fort Myers, Florida. But we do have an online class and it's a little bit different than other online classes because there's a lot of support. So we have, it's called the Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography. The first class is learning to shoot in manual. Then we talk about composition, lighting, including basic flash, flash photography, and then what I call the techie stuff, which is metering modes and, and I don't know, focus modes, white balance, things like that. So the format of the online class is that you watch the two hour class each week and then you have homework every day that you have to turn in to me, your teacher. <laughs> so I'm going to help you along. If you can't find a button or figure out how to turn it, I'm going to help you with your homework. I'm going to critique your homework a little to make sure that you're getting the concepts. This class is more to learn the technical side of photography because it's my belief that once you get all that stuff under your belt, then your creativity soars because you know how to do things. So our motto at Understand Photography is we simplify the technical. Click on our website, understandphotography.com, and you know, you'll see the training tab where, where the online classes or any of the classes are, and you can get more information that, there. By the way, once you're there, understandphotography.com, the first thing you're going to see is it says click here for freebies. Go ahead and do that. You can download or watch a video for free in exchange for being on our mailing list. We mail out a newsletter once a month. Don't worry, I'm not sending you something every day. I don't know why people do that. It drives me crazy. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to talk with Heather, Heather and me. Hi, Heather. Hi, Peggy. Long time no see. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let you lead. All right. You lead the interview, but we're both going to talk because this is a subject we both know a lot about. Okay. Heather, and I didn't give a full introduction of Heather, but Heather is, um, she's an artist. So she has a, a very good, solid education in color theory and design and composition in general. So she's, this is a good topic for us. All right, thanks Peggy. All right. A lot of people, they take all their pictures and they, they need some way to show them, some concrete method of getting it out there so that they can show other people other than, hey, go to my website or check out my Instagram. Um, so we're gonna talk about books today. So what are some of the things that we should consider before we even start the process of designing a book? Well, the first thing you wanna think about is what, what's the purpose of the book? Now I am a big pro proponent of printing your work. Yes. Because in this digital age, they, they say that this is the, like the most photographed generation in the world and there's gonna be no pictures to show. Because oh, I know. If anything crashes, they're just done, they're gone. gone. And we have all lost pictures, oh, yeah. all of us. So <laughs> we have to really watch that. So printing is a good way, but then of course, like right now, my mother is in the process of moving. And so she has boxes and boxes and boxes and boxes of photos. My mother's 85 years old. Right. <laughs> So if you put them into books, it's such a nice way to keep your memories. So the first thing you need to decide is, is what's the purpose? Right. Is this just to keep your memories? Is this, I mean, it could be to keep your memories. It could be a gift for friends. Like, you know, <clears throat> say you have a big birthday party, a big like 60th birthday celebration, which by the way, I was in Cuba with my friends, but no other fanfare for my 60th, you know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but let's say you have a nice party or something like that, then you might want to put that in a book to give to the guests. Right. So to document that party. So the purpose is what it is. It could be a memory book for yourself. It could be, um, you know, a gift for your friends. 
All right, so what are some other things? Like a coffee table book. You could make a coffee table book just to display. Let's say you took some fabulous trip, like we just got back from our trip from Tuscany. So you could do a beautiful coffee table book that you want to display on your coffee table, or you might even want to sell. Right. You know, we went on this trip with uh, Stefano Caporali. Sorry, Stefano. And he has a beautiful little coffee table book that he gave us each as a gift as part of the oh, trip. Oh, that's lovely. It's a small one, which, you know, usually think of them as being big, but his is small and it looks really, really nice. So he gives them as gifts. He sells them in gift stores in Tuscany, things like that. You can sell them on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> or are you going to make a storybook? Let's say that you... Um, you know, one of the things <laughs> seems to be pretty popular to do in our area is there is a very poor farming town nearby, actually really nearby Really you, nearby me. Called Immokalee, Florida. And my mother even talks about, she remembers seeing a documentary when she was a child about Immokalee, Florida, and how rough it is for the migrant workers. So that's a story. You could put together, you know, a book that is maybe more text than pictures. Right. So, you know... You need to know the purpose, I guess. Or even that. a field guide. Oh, like we have. Like you guys have. Yes. Flor Florida Photo Spots, Collier County, Naples and Collier County. That's our book. Joe Fitzpatrick and I put that book together. And I have plans to do more books, but so far. Not enough time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you have to think about the concept of it. So we just talked about doing a story, a story type of book, which... You, have, you use fancy words like narrative, <laughs> narrative book, um, which be, would be a little bit different from a documentary because a documentary you're just kind of, here's what I saw, but a narrative you usually have a, like a Right, an there's more of a story a theme behind it. Or, yeah, something like that. Um, or it's just going to be pictures, like a coffee table book or portfolio a portfolio a is portfolio. A, a big thing you know with a portfolio you're going to want to have you know a nice variety of your work with the same look though if you're in our facebook group remember we have a facebook group facebook.com slash groups slash sell your photography and we talk a lot about how to sell your photography as art and one thing in your portfolio you have to have a look that says hey i am heather musingo this is my artwork this is my look so remember that when you're putting together your portfolio in general, but especially if you're putting together a portfolio book. So we've got our purpose. Why does this matter for the design process? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about the answer. <laughs> Why does it matter for the design concept? Process. Process. Like the, if you know why you're making the book, you can help determine what size to make it, what, if you want it square or landscape or, you know, the size and, and shape of your book are kind of determined by how you want it to be used, right? Okay. I hadn't thought of it that way, but I like it. <laughs> For me, it's like, I like square books. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the, the cost. Yeah, yeah. Cost is a big thing, and that's something that when you're costing out the book, of course, you have to weigh it because if this is for your memories, in my opinion, that's really important. If you're giving it as a gift to your friends, honestly, I think it's not as important for your own memories because you might lose those pictures. It's really important, spend more money. But if it's a gift for your friends who you traveled with or had the party, you know, you, you've got to think every page costs you money. Right. The type of cover costs you money. Even the type of paper it's printed on. Exactly. The quality of the images. Exactly. It's all, all adds up. So you ha the purpose makes a big difference on that kind of stuff because if you're making a coffee table book, it better be on nice paper. It better have a decent cover. Uh, you know, it better be a nice book. Mm -hmm. But if it's... If it's, you know, depending on the purpose is how many pages you would depend decide on. But I think more so on pages, it's about the content. And it's my opinion. All right. That less is more. Agreed. I think if you, you know, for instance, I just took this amazing trip to Tuscany. And let's say, um, 
And don't get any ideas, ladies, because I'm not doing this. I don't have time. Let's say I wanted to put together a gift book for the participants. Um, I would think about, you know, the different spots we went to. Mm -hmm. But we did an awful lot of landscape photography. Right. So I wouldn't want it to be all landscape photography. I'd want variety. I'd want some, like, of the groups of the people, the participants. I want some pictures of them in there. I want some landscapes, of course, because that's that was the focus of the trip. But, you know, even things like pictures of the food and then pictures of the villages we went into so that there's a nice variety. Right. To document every experience. Well, not every experience, but the highlights of yeah. the trip. Yeah. But I don't want to have you know, 40 landscapes. I probably got 40 good landscape <laughs> pictures because it was an amazing trip. Stefano was so adorable because the big joke now is we're, we're always talking about everything is epic. This <laughs> is epic. <laughs> because we had so many good days. <laughs> um, anyway, what are we talking about? About page, or how many pages? How many pages? And I was saying how many pictures. Right. Which I guess is not the same thing. No, so we can talk about how many pictures should we put on a page. Well, let's back up. We need talk about the cover. Why is the cover, what should I think about when designing the cover of the book? Well, it's funny because I think you and I have different opinions on that. I think we have the same opinion, but we go about it a different way because my opinion is you choose the cover last. Ah. And you, I think, like to choose the cover first. But I think we both agree. It's important. It's important. We shouldn't choose a book by its cover, but everyone does. <laughs> everyone does. That's good. The cover is like pretty that. important. You're so clever. <gasps> yeah. So the cover should convey what it is. If it's right. this Tuscany trip, maybe it's a picture of, of us in front of a beautiful landscape to show that it was not just about landscapes, it was about our trip. Or yeah. Make it personal. Show yeah. people. If if that's the if theme that's of the book. If that's your theme, right. But if it's just, if it's a coffee table book of landscapes of Tuscany, then you would find your highest impact picture and put that on the cover. Yeah. What other covers types, of, what, do you, what else do you have ideas for the covers? For covers, well, I guess it would depend on the purpose of the book. I mean, if you're doing a portfolio book, maybe you want your best work yeah, on the you front, probably only want one picture on the front in most cases, right? Because you don't want a cluttered. No, definitely cover. not. So, yeah, probably your best, or the or the picture that, the photograph that really conveys your look better yes. than anything else, maybe. You know, Karen Shulman was a guest on our show mm -hmm. and talked about her journey as a fine art photographer, which is a really good show. You guys should. Heather will put in the show notes what number, I will. what show number that was and maybe a link to it. But Karen's got a really interesting story and she has really found a nice look. She does, um, she goes to New York City and she photographs the reflections in the store windows so that the, you know, the... So she gets the display, but she also gets the reflection of the city. Yeah. It's really spectacular. But she has one that just knocks your socks off and that's the one that would be on the cover of her book, you exactly. know? Exactly. So. That's the kind of thing you're looking for. All right, so we've got our cover. We've turned open the cover. That first page. By it's the way, called... let me, can I just back up a little sure. bit? Sure. Because I like plain leather covers too, or pleather. I think pleather is in pleather. Now. But uh, sustainable I plastic. Like, <laughs> I, yeah, I like a nice classic-looking book, and maybe on the spine, 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 the spine. You would say. Tuscany, October 2019, and that, or maybe even a little bit on the cover, just the words. Just the or words. Or like, you know, the wedding albums, they have the little cutouts. Mm -hmm. That's pretty too. It is. A beautiful leather, pleather cover with a little cutout with a landscape of Tuscany and gold uh, imprinting. That's a nice cover too. So it would. again, that goes back to the purpose and what you're going to do with it. Right. So if you're just going to there Keep are it. lots of options. Yeah, and so a lot of it depends on the options and how much money you have <laughs> or that you want to spend. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean All to right, so you open the book, first page, 
lead image. Okay, I'm going to back way up before you All get right. to the first page. <clears throat> Because how do you know what the lead image is if you don't even know what's going in there? That's true. So how, let's talk about how to choose the pictures first. So we already talked about variety. Yes. So, how, I mean, there are different ways to sort and different ways to, um, you know, choose different pictures. So we already talked about less is more. We already talked about variety. Those are two things. So we talked about it a little bit. But how do you actually do it? And how do you decide? I know, because we all have thousands of pictures to choose from. So you want less is more. But what I, what I do, I mean, I use a software called Breeze Browser. Breeze Browser Pro, maybe it's called. And it was like, I think it's like $100 now. It used to be cheap, but it's expensive now. But I, I don't actually recommend it. A lot of people use Lightroom. If you're com comfortable with some kind of sorting software, I think that's great. But I know a lot of our customers are not very technical on the computer, uh, but they can use um, photos that comes with Microsoft, or they can use iPhoto. Well, they don't call it iPhoto anymore on Mac, do they? Photo. Just, photo, just photo on photo. Mac, I think now. But anyway, they can use those. You can sort things like that, and then I just print off the thumbnails and I cut them. And I just That's put them on great the floor idea. or on a table and start sorting them that way. I mean, you don't have to have fancy software to do it. And it's so quick when you can just use, use your hands to move things around right. and, and then you can get it done quicker. And it's, the only thing is it's, you know, you have to decide, um, like this picture is going to be big, this is going to be small. You obviously can't change the size of them. But, but at least you can choose what's going to be included. And then I always think you should ask other people's opinion before you print. Absolutely. And not somebody who's going to be printing it for you because they're in for the money. They're going to convince you to put as many pictures as right. possible in there. Just ask somebody, say, hey, I want to put this book together. And they'll say, well, why do you have 25 pictures of this? This, is, this all looks like the same picture. They're different expressions. Well, pick the best one. Yeah. <laughs> or you two. Need, you need that outsider to look at yeah. your pictures and just and how you know if you're married you got one automatically <laughs> <laughs> or if you have a kid kids will kids will be very very truthful with you they will <laughs> whether you like it or not all right, <laughs> right so and what are some ways that i could group those images and to the, tell the story the next thing i was going to say was color okay you know well one of the things you you said was if you can do like a close-up and a distant shot, that kind of tells a whole story, which is a nice idea, I think. But color is another re way to group them. You know, group them, not group them, but to, to as you're choosing the pictures. Like say, I'm doing this Tuscany book. Well, we were out at sunrise and sunset every day, almost. I think we didn't, we didn't do sunrise the first day because we were all jet lagged, but every other day we were doing sunrise and sunset and then we didn't shoot a lot in the middle of the day except for when we were in the towns. So we have a lot of orange mm -hmm. pictures and then some blue pictures from the daytimes. Dip blue and you know how they have those old villages, the what color is that, the bricks, you know, like yeah. a, kind of an orange too, but mm -hmm. like a brighter color. So you'd want to group them that way too. Like you would want to put either your sunrises and your sunsets together, maybe some of the blue sky things in the middle and then your other sunsets at the end or something like that. Another color idea is your backgrounds. What are you going to put behind those pictures? Right now, I know I'm talking a lot, I'm not letting you talk, am I? <laughs> Go ahead. Right now, white is in. Yes. So white backgrounds, picture. That's what's in right now. Might not be in next year, but that's what's in right now. It's a good, clean look, and I like it. it. I think most people like it. But you could have, like, a light gray back there. Or, or even, like, a, a translucent kind of texture. As long as it's very subtle. You don't yeah. get busy. I remember when, you know, of course, I'm, I was heavily involved in weddings when the world went digital. And we were all so excited because we could, like, put somebody with a flowered background and and it just looks you look at those wedding albums now and they look so cluttered I, we it's hard so to excited. find a focal point because it's all yeah. over the place because we didn't know what we were 
do it. We were just excited that we could do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just because you can doesn't mean you should. I know. <laughs> So anyway, just that's that, those are different things to think about. I mean, you can have some nice c colored backgrounds, and you know, or when you're designing your pages, which haven't really talked about this too much, but if you're designing your pages, like I've said, with putting them on the table, you know, look in the look at the colors. Like say, I've got all these sunset colors, but these three have these pops of, you know, uh, I don't know, I can't think of anything. Like three of them are more grayish. You know, you might want to put those together or put them, if you're going to put, let's say, three pictures, you know, two on one page, one on the other page, you know, maybe opposites or something like that. Yeah. Just to kind of make the colors look good together. Yeah, you don't want, when you open the page, you don't want your eye to be distracted. You need it to flow easily and you don't want to put con too many contrasting colors together. Yeah. You don't, it won't look good. You don't want to stress your viewer. No. You want them to look, most of the time it's best just to do one picture or panoramic. Panoramics or panoramas? Mm -hmm. Either. Oh, are you sure? No. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> I'm not sure either. Now we have to, Heather, you have to figure that out and put it in the figure show it. notes. <laughs> but I think, you know, if you, this is another option though when you're buying the book. If you want to do the panoramas, you need to get a lay flat book. Do you know what that is? So when you open it, it's, it shows the whole thing. It and doesn't, doesn't have, have that dip in the middle. Which there is a word for, and I can't think of what the word is right now. But that dip in the middle has a word. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so they have some beautiful books that lay flat so that you just have like a seam through the bit middle of your picture but no dip. So you have to, if, you're, if you are doing panoramas, you have to make sure that your seam doesn't go through somebody's face or something weird like that. Mm -hmm. But panoramas are, if you have a beautiful landscape, you open a book and see it big, it makes, definitely makes a nicer impact. Yeah. But you also, you know, just don't want to have, you know, it could be just one, one picture, one picture, you know, one on each page as you open the book. I would say no more than two per page. It depends on the size again. If you've got like an 11 by 17 book, you don't have to fill one the two page spread with just two pictures. It depends on the pictures, I guess. Yeah. Because if you, and, and I'm just thinking about when I was designing a lot of wedding albums, sometimes, you know, with weddings, we take pictures of the jewelry and little details mm -hmm. and sometimes I would just have two pages with nine images per page that's 18 images on a spread it's a lot but they would be just little tiny things little right. tiny details because that's a very cluttered look you have to be very mm -hmm. careful with you it you do so if you're designing if you're a landscape photographer or or if it's just your friends and you didn't do any little tiny detail shots you want to just you want to have the pictures as big as you can get them Agreed. Agreed. All right. So we've got pictures. We can group them by color. We can group them by geographic location. Like if you went to several different locations yeah. on your trip, you could group the pictures by mm -hmm. where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you could group it by chronological order. Okay, we started the trip here and go through to the end chronologically. So there's, there's different ways that you yeah. can organize that yeah yeah that's and that's why I like putting it out on the table it's yeah just a, it's just a nicer way and I and when I was designing a lot of wedding albums I did it I used the they I don't think they make the software that I used to use anymore so I didn't I didn't want to plus it was really expensive <laughs> um, I didn't want to talk about it but I found it harder to do using the software than just kind of thinking about it but again, when I was doing weddings, I was shooting with the wedding album in mind. Right. And I don't shoot that way anymore. Especially on a trip. Yeah. You're not shooting to document it in a book. You're no. shooting it because you want to document the experience. Right. And I'm looking for that one beautiful picture that I can hang on my <laughs> wall like I have any more wall space. <laughs> All right. So we got pictures down. What about text? Should well, we add text to our pictures? How much text should we add to the book? Then that depends on the book, because if you're doing a storybook, then you need text. Right. 
but I think I like a little text on everything. I like the name of the picture. At, at least. least the title. Yeah. The title of the picture makes a big difference. In fact, that could be a part of a show. I don't think it's a whole show, but maybe we could talk. We'll talk about this later, but maybe the artist's story and the titles yes. and that kind of stuff. But um, I think that's the minimum you should have is at least the title of each picture. Unless it's not, you know, if it's just documenting, you know, that you can see people giving a toast and it says, happy 60th birthday. I don't think you need any text on that right. kind of stuff. But if you are going to use text, less is more. Exactly. Don't be wordy. Don't use lingo. And don't use, I know you, you, you and I disagree on this a little bit. You say no more than three different fonts. I say no more than two different fonts. Don't use a bunch of different fonts no matter what, though. Right. If you want, like, uh, the title of this section, that could be one font, and then the, the rest of the text might be a different font, but I wouldn't use any more than and that. And the same with the colors. Right. Your font's one color, I think. Maybe, oh, absolutely. Maybe if you have a cover, maybe you could have two colors, maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> black works. Yeah, black works best. You can see it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else and you got? You might want to add like a little inspirational quote. If it's a coffee oh, table book. Oh, I like And it. you've got, you know, this do a John Muir into the woods or, you know, Thoreau or something. No, I like that. When I was, I am going to get better at my Instagram again, but that's what I was doing with my Instagram pictures. I was looking up a quote that would go with the picture. It makes it it's nice. It's easy to look up quotes nowadays, too. It is. Just Google it. Just Google it. all these quotes and... One word. Google yeah. one word and you come up with all these different yeah. quotes. Yeah, yeah. So, that's a great idea. I love that. Oh, I'm going to do that on my next book. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So should each page have the same layout? Oh, I or don't think so. should different layouts throughout. Yeah, I don't think so. I think Otherwise, need, it gets boring. You need variety. Yeah, I, I definitely think so. You know, one of the things that is not in style anymore, but I, I liked the look, but it could get boring. This is a wedding book again was just a flush mounted album because we had that before we did digital mm -hmm. a flush map mounted album was one picture it filled the page from edge to edge and then of course it was mounted on a you know a lay mm -hmm. flat type of book basically on heavy something very heavy um, and it's a nice look it's a it's a high impact look because your page you know, each picture fills the page, but right now, a little white space around the pictures is in style, and I kind of like that better, especially because then you're not stuck with a different, like each picture had to be the same exact size in those, right. in those you know, flush-mounted books. So um, you could do a couple panoramas, you could have, you know, one page with a picture on each side, the next one with two pictures on each side, or two pictures and one picture, or Something like that, I think. Definitely. Like a little variety. And you, variety. you really need to think about giving the viewer's eyes some space. You need yeah. give the pictures some room to breathe. Yeah. Room to breathe. Room to breathe. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> right, any other tips for... Well, the software. Software. Right. Back up. Yeah, because I, I made you skip over that because I told you I do it on the, <laughs> on the dining room table. Well, I don't always do it on the dining room table, but I think a lot of our customers are not that technical, and it's just such an easy way to do it. But, yeah, but there's all kinds of software right now, and it, I think it's a tough business because a lot of them come and go. Like Apple does not do books anymore. Apple you could, used to be able to design and get a book printed through Apple just less than a year ago they stopped doing it. Um, you know, my publisher was a big one. That's gone. So now, so I don't know of the business, but it must, it must be a tough business is all I'm thinking of. Right. But the big one that most photographers use right now is Blurb. And the reason they use Blurb is because they use Lightroom. You can use the print module, is it the print module? Mm -hmm. in, in Lightroom and design a book. A simple book in Lightroom, and then you just upload it right to Blurb from Lightroom. So easy. if you know how to do that, it's it's easy. And Blurb has some nice quality books, nice choices. Um, Shutterfly is probably the biggest consumer book mm -hmm. design and design book design and publishing. 
and they've got fairly reasonable rate. I mean, books are not cheap. Right. But they have like coupons and you can get on their mailing list and you can get all these discounts and things like that if you're like regular customer. But their design software is pretty easy to use. Um, my professional lab is called Miller's Lab and they have a consumer division called mpix.com, mpix.com. They have a really easy to use book design software. It's really easy to use and you can sort your pictures in there and all that kind of stuff and it pops to the templates, that kind of stuff. What else is there? Smilebox. Snapfish. Then, Snapfish. I forgot about Snapfish. I haven't used that in a long time. Pixaloo is another one, but you mm -hmm. found one that you said was really popular that I never heard of and it was HTML, wait. Flip. Flip. HTML5. Which is a really bad name in my opinion. It is. It's hard to remember. <laughs> but there's so many. Just Google. Google it. You mean Google book books? Bookmaking book. software. Book templates. Book, yeah. Yeah. Photo but books. I mean, I, I mean, I would highly recommend either Blurb or Mpix or Shutterfly. Even Shutterfly. Yeah, I mm -hmm. use Shutterfly. They, it's pretty easy to use. But um, with Mpix, it's a professional lab. Right. So See. I like it better because I know my picture quality is going to be good with MPix. Where with Shutterfly, you might get good quality. Right. Blurb is pretty well known for good quality as well, though. So the other ones I just don't know that well. So, but they do. They have easy to use software. They're all of them are free. I, I mean, I'm sure they have because you know, I told you I had that expensive software in the past, right. which maybe I still have it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't do that many <laughs> weddings anymore. <laughs> Oh. But the software is, is usually free, so you can find, because they want you to buy the book through them. Right. That's where they make the money. So then, see, after I designed the book, then that's when I decide on the cover. You did it the opposite way. You want your high impact one first, and then I think that's a preference. What else you got for me? Uh, oh, we didn't talk about the lead picture, the first no. picture, did we? We did not. Because the very first picture and the very last picture are the most important pictures besides the cover besides picture. Besides the cover. So the first picture, uh, okay, so if you are having a picture on your cover, that's your highest impact. The first picture has to also be a high impact picture and it's got to do something to make you want to change the page. And that's where composition comes in. This is what we forgot to talk about. Composition within the pictures makes a difference on how you place them together. Exactly. So um, that first picture has to lead you, like it either has to be facing to the right, so like you're going to open the picture. <laughs> right. Or, you know. Drawing your eye towards the right so you want to turn the page. So you want to turn the page. And then on the inside, let's say that you, um, you know, you took a, a lot of people, pick, or maybe you went on safari in Africa and you've got a lot of animal pictures. You don't want anybody, except for on that lead picture, looking to the outside of the picture. You want them looking in the picture, unless it makes sense. Sometimes it might make sense for them to be looking off, but remember that composition rule of, rule of, of room in front? Yes. That applies too if you're putting the picture on the edge of a page, you don't want them looking off to the edge of the page, you want them looking inside. Correct. So maybe at each other or something like that. So that's something you have to keep in mind too is the composition of the picture and how it goes with the other pictures. And then Good that brings. Tip. Yeah, I'm thinking of this stuff as we're going. <laughs> and then the last page has to be a high impact page too. Now, when we were doing weddings all the time, we staged a last picture. We'd Absolutely. have them waving goodbye or trailing off into the sunset or, you know, we would always stage that last picture. It's not as easy to do if you're, like, documenting a birthday party. Right. What's, what's your goodbye picture? That's you a know? tough one. Maybe it's the toast or maybe it's the birthday person smiling and waving at the... But that last picture has to... It has to be a statement. It has to be a final, like, thanks for looking at this stuff. Yes. That's a good way to put it. So it's not easy to come up with that. I think it's harder to come up with the last picture than the first picture because you want to you wanna end it in the right way. It, you don't want it just to sort of like a story trailing off. It has to feel like this is the end, like if you have a nighttime picture maybe. Right. 
So maybe that's something you need to think about when you're shooting. <laughs> if you are, because it is easier. When I was doing weddings, it was easier when I was thinking of the shots I was going to need for the wedding album. It's easier if you know you're going to put it toge together a book that you're going to need certain types of pictures to make the book work. So just an idea. What else right. do we need to talk about? What did we uh, miss? Let's look through our notes. <laughs> uh, How much text should a company, company? We talked about text. Grouping your just images. Just remember with text, just not too much. I mean, if it's a book book and pictures are secondary, that's one thing. But even like for Joe and I put together the guidebook and we have pictures. And it's not about dramatic coffee table type of pictures. It's just about pictures to kind of show you what's in that area that we're guiding right. you to. But when we put the text in, there's lots of white space. Because people don't like to read things that look cluttered. So we need... Keep it short and sweet. Room, what'd you say? Room, room, to, room to breathe. breathe. <laughs> um, all right, we're looking through our notes. If, if the audience is wondering what we're doing, <laughs> a consistent, here's something Heather wrote, a consistent layout keeps the book from being too choppy, but some variation is necessary to keep the viewer's interest. Remember the rule of thirds, both horizontally and vertically, as, as well as other principles of design. Unity, variety, hierarchy, 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 hierarchy proportion, scale, balance, ba balance, rhythm, repetition, proximity, and emphasis. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Design concepts in general. Um, I'm trying to think of who I just interviewed. Oh, the guy who was a graphic designer. Yes, Kevin Holiday. Kevin Holiday, who we're going to bring back because he was so good. But he had so much education in design because he was a graphic design artist, and that I mean, study that, study those concepts. They Absolutely, really, really help for everything in photography everything I in do. life because life is art it is right <laughs> what else anything we talked about backgrounds we talked about fonts where do you find fonts you don't know i don't know okay well i'll tell you then okay i thought that would be something you would get right on because i, I just forgot though you make your own fonts don't you sometimes heather is quite an artist if you follow her on instagram which is Artful dot musings. Artful dot musings. Mm -hmm. You know, I never realized that was a play on your last name till just now. Ta da! <laughs> 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 Masingo's musings. I get it. Now I get it. But she uh, designs a lot of fonts and letters, and it's a, she. You should follow her on Instagram because she's better at Instagram than I am. <laughs> 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 but. Um, you can Google, you can buy fonts, they're not that expensive. You can Google free fonts, there's lots of free fonts out there. There are. There are even now softwares to help you identify th fonts. So let's say you see a font on a page that you really like, you know, snip it somehow if you know how to do that on your computer, and you put it into the, you know, the website, say, what is this font? I don't know what the website is, you have to look it up. You put that in and it'll start analyzing so it'll tell you the name of the font. And then of course they sell the fonts right there. So that makes it easy. It's nice. If you see something you like, you can find out what it is. But there's tons of free fonts. Just be careful though because those are kind of some of the sites that will download the malware and the adware and all that kind of stuff okay. onto your computer. So you know, anytime something's free, you have to worry about what they're downloading with the free download. So keep that in mind. But there's, there are tons of options out there for free. But even paid, though, they're very inexpensive. Unless you're a graphic artist who needs thousands of fonts, if you're only going to buy one or two fonts, just pay for them. Good advice. Good advice. I like it. All right. I think that's the end of my notes. Just final tips, wrap-up tips is all I've got. What do Left. you got? Go ahead, you do the final tips. Because you have them written down, don't you? They're on the floor. Oh, they're on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say from the seven habits of highly effective people, 
which by the way I've never read. I listened to them on tape on you know re- well on cassette back then. I tried to read that book. It was a hard book to read. Have you read it? I have not. But the concepts are awesome. So the first concept of the seven habits of highly effective people is to begin with the end in mind. I like it. So have a plan. Have a plan basically. You, who who's your audience? Sort through the pictures. Think about your com- composition, including color. And then what? Layout, text. Your beginning and your end. You know, your beginning and your end, and that's kind of it. And then, of course, deciding which software to use and how much you want to spend. Because yes. you might put a book together and realize it's too expensive and have to take some pictures out. So keep that in mind, too, because they're not, they're not that cheap to do. They're not really expensive either, but if it's something you're going to do on a regular basis, it could be, it could get expensive. And then just think about your look. Like for me, if I had more money, I would have all my personal books in nice pleather bound books. All of my personal memories. I would have somebody, notice I didn't say me, Uh I would have somebody scan them in and then (laughs) put them together in books and then I would have a beautiful library with nothing. It'd be like one of those libraries from Harry Potter, but it would be all pictures. <laughs> but that's probably unlikely to happen because I can't afford it and I don't have the time. You're right. But think, think, think that through on what your look is and what you're going to do with them. So. All right, what else? Anything? Are we wrapping up? I think we're wrapping up. Okay, we're going to wrap up the show. Thank you, Heather, for being a guest. Are you a guest? No, you're not sort really of. a guest. A co-host. Co-host. I like that much better. Ooh, man, you keep moving up Whoa. in the world. <laughs> Poor Joe. Joe's over there saying, I used to be the producer. I got yeah. bumped. <laughs> now Heather's like, oh, I'm now I'm a co-host. <laughs> once a month. Once a month we'll have, we'll have Heather on once a month because she has a lot of great ideas. She's been coming up with the topics. I mean, we ask the guests for topics too, of course, and the guests lead, but we have a lot of topics that Heather comes up with. She researched, so she's really good at this. And of course, she's an artist. Her father is a professional photographer, so she grew up around f- professional photography. She has a professional camera. That I don't know how to use yet. <laughs> she will take the four weeks to proficiency in photography and learn how to take a picture. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> anyway, Heather Masingo and your and your handle on in- Instagram again is Artful Dot Musings. Artful Dot Musings. Remember to check out our website because we will have all this, and by we I mean Heather, we'll have all this typed up in nice little bullet points so that you can just kind of skim it. You don't have to listen to the whole show again. <laughs> and that's understandphotography.com. And and while you're there, Look around. I mean, we have spent a lot of time and effort over the years putting in blog articles and videos, all with the intention on teaching photography in the simplest way that we can do it. So we want, I mean, our motto is we simplify the technical and we really, really try to live up to that motto. I'm Peggy Fair, and thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. We will see you next Friday. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Time.